Nothing shapes Geometry Dash quite like the community-made levels do. Most people who get into playing Geometry Dash start because of the difficulty and stay for the user-created levels and demons. The real players who carry this game forward are the level creators. 2018 was one of the worst years for Geometry Dash since the game came out. But this year, a lot of really fun and good-looking levels were released. And a lot of these have gone underappreciated for how good they are. So, to highlight the best levels of this year, I've put together a list of the top 25 demons of 2019. I'll be ranking these based off of impact, relevancy, and overall level quality. And obviously this is all based on my own opinion, so feel free to disagree in the comments. I'm also going to nab some gameplay for this video, since I can't beat a lot of the levels on this list. So, channels I'll be taking from will be in the description. Polygonal Array was Jazor's final level. It's pretty fun, and it has really original gameplay and interesting block design. The decoration is mainly based off of some glow effects, and some effects in the block design. It was really one of those demons that you just kind of had to be when it came out. The level starts out looking really clean, and then it kind of deconstructs itself towards the end. It's a cool effect of the level falling apart that I haven't really seen before. It's nice to see a level tell a story without integrating an annoying cutscene. And the story might be pretty simple, but so is falling ups or kill bots. This was definitely a good last level for Jazor, and I'd say his best one. Everything Serpunge makes just has something pretty special about it. I always look forward to Acid Rush levels. They always have really unique design and gameplay. Acid Rush 2 is one of the most fun levels in the game. And the decoration was good in the first two Acid Rush levels, but Acid Rush 3 is definitely the best. For me, most easy to hard demon gameplay and decoration is pretty average, but you won't really find any bad parts in an Acid Rush level. They're all pretty good. Serpunge's levels nail every single thing that makes a level good, and this one is no exception. Renovant is a sequel to an older demon called Allegiance. It's a pretty new extreme demon, but it's been around for a long time. It just hasn't been able to find a verifier until recently. The decoration in this one is really dated, but I can appreciate its style for being original while still looking related to Allegiance. I wouldn't say that Renovant is better or worse than Allegiance, but so far Anathema looks really promising and better than both of them. The team that made this probably could have done better with the decoration, as a lot of the parts look messy and empty at the same time, if that makes sense. As of the time I'm recording this, Renovant isn't rated yet, but I think it probably will be before the end of the year. Sigma is a sequel to Gamma, a level that came out around two years ago. Gamma had some parts that looked pretty average, but Sigma is constantly well decorated. The gameplay is also fairly consistent in the style, and some parts are harder than others, but it's all formatted in similar ways. There aren't any individual parts in this level that really stood out as being amazing, but none stuck out as being bad either. There are a few parts that stand out as being different, but at least they look good. Altair has some really interesting detail, and uses a lot of different styles while staying true to its blue and purple theme. This is one of those levels that was worked on for a long time, and doesn't really have any obvious problems with it. Anything that's posted on Viper's account is going to be made without any bad parts, and all of his levels are remastered in order to fit with some certain theme. Viper usually only picks from top-of-the-line creators, so you can't really expect anything other than quality parts. Altair has some pretty good decoration and gameplay, and overall, it's just pretty clean. The only reason it doesn't place higher on this list is it just doesn't have as much character as some of the higher placements. Titan Complex is another extreme demon mega collab. For the most part, it follows a pretty loose theme of being dark. This level has some pretty regular decoration. It's basically just enough to get rated, but the reason this level is on the list is the theming and the gameplay. The gameplay fits with the song really well, and it's really just fun to play in general. My personal favorite part is the start of the drop. The wave movements in this part are pretty fun. There are a few parts I can see being annoying if you're trying to beat this level, but that's mostly due to its difficulty, and I don't really care about balance since I can't beat the level in the first place. Titan Complex also has some parts that are pretty good decoration-wise, but nothing too noteworthy. Dandash is a really fun, easy demon that has some pretty good sync with the music and some pretty fun looking designs. The colors in this level are so perfect in so many places. It's a pretty good example of getting attention through actually making a good level rather than just making an extreme demon so a lot of big channels play it. I saw some people not liking this level strictly because of the Fortnite dances. 
And honestly, I think that's a stupid reason for not liking a level. I think it's cool that Maxiland is taking inspiration from another game he likes. And the stick animations are really well done, and they look cool. So it really doesn't matter where they're from. And at the beginning of the level, there's an option to just get rid of the stick figure anyway. So if you don't like it for that reason, you can just turn it off. Remove Submission is the second unrated level on this list. RobTob is typically pretty good at rating rate-worthy levels, but he does have a few rules in place for what levels can get rated and which ones can't. And Remove Submission just so happens to use profanity, which is against the rules, in this song. And this song is one of my favorites as far as songs used in Geometry Dash. As for the level, I think it's really interesting to base a level off of something that isn't in Geometry Dash. And this one uses the Newgrounds audio portal. It's decorated in the style that the Newgrounds website is for most of it, which makes for some cool effects and interesting decoration. The decoration in Remove Submission is really unique and refreshing. A level doesn't really have to have perfectly detailed decoration to make it good, and Remove Submission is a perfect example of that. Sunset Sandstorm takes inspiration from a classic extreme demon called Black Blizzard, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. But in Sunset Sandstorm, instead of using black colors, it uses very bright colors. This demon is infamous for having annoying gameplay, but for me, someone who's just basically watching the level being played, the gameplay looks really synced with the level. I like how the player moves with the level and the song. There are some parts that seem like they would be really annoying to play though. Kyrae Elysion is another one of Viperin's mega collabs. This level is heaven themed, and I think it looks pretty cool. A lot of it is in 3 or 4 times speed gameplay, which can get pretty annoying. And some of the gameplay is based off of memory, which I personally do not like. The decoration in this level is just as good as Viperin's other levels, and it has that extra edge of being original. Maybe it's just me, but something original and average is better than something that's been done before that looks good. A little bit of a tangent here, but I didn't know this until going onto his channel, but he actually sells merch for individual levels. Here's an Arabora shirt, and sure enough, here's a Kyrae Elysion shirt. The shirt actually looks pretty good. I would never buy it though. Artifice is one of the best extreme demons gameplay wise, according to some of the best players. I played it through in practice for this video, and it is really fun in most parts. As fun as an extreme demon can be for someone whose hardest demon is something like Crazy 2. That's pretty much the only reason I included it, but it does have pretty okay decoration. Zodiac is the hardest demon out right now, and that's about where the good stuff ends. There are a few decently decorated parts, and there are a few bad parts. Even parts by good creators like Penuto and Enlex are pretty average looking. This level is just really mediocre decoration wise, and it's really unbalanced gameplay wise. Remember when the hardest demons in the game actually used to be good? I remember when Bloodbath came out, it was a crazy big deal to be the first person to just get to a certain percent, and it took 8 whole months for somebody to beat it. Now it seems like extreme demons come out and only the best players care about them, unless they're special like some of the levels higher up on this list. Zodiac was basically made to be the hardest demon ever, which it is now. But I can see somebody like Enswish verifying something way harder than this. But we'll see what happens in the next year or so. Magma Bound and the levels that were inspired by it all use this cartoony style and they have a lot of moving objects. This level was the first of its style this year and went on to inspire a lot of other similar styled levels. The decoration's not really flawed in any way, but the gameplay is really hit or miss. There are some parts that are really good, and then there's some that are just kind of annoying. Mainly the spider parts. In this one, you can't even really see where you're going, and you have to click really fast. That's just kind of a nitpick, and the good does outweigh the bad. But if the gameplay was better, I could see this going in the top 10, because the decoration is definitely better than some higher placements. Butiti 3 is Jonathan GD's most recent big level. I think he has some of the best gameplay out of the majority of the popular creators. It's not too hard to make good gameplay, but a lot of creators just can't do it for some reason. Jonathan GD is able to make simple style gameplay work extremely well. The highlights of 2018 were some of Jonathan GD's levels like Future Funk, Butiti 2, and I'd say Butiti 3 is even better. The Yandere was an extreme demon mega collab that was verified by Dorami. 
It's got pretty okay gameplay and really good decoration, and it's pretty original and interesting. A lot of people seem to really like this level. There are some really good parts, and there's also a few really bad ones. I think as far as hell-themed demons go, Crimson Planet is the best one out right now, but that came out last year, so I can't really put it on this list. The Andere is pretty cool, even though it has some parts where the designs are messy, but I think that's because Dorami brought on lesser-known creators, which I think is really cool, and some of them did a really good job, but some didn't. Now we're getting into the really good levels, the top 10. And coming in at number 10, we've got Acid Trip. First, can I just mention the theming your level around a drug is probably one of the most interesting things you can do in this game. It's a bit risky considering Rob Tub might not rate it, but he did rate this one. The gameplay in this level moves really nicely and doesn't get annoying to play after a while like some other hard demons. It's also really easy to sight read if you know what you're doing. Every part in this level is top-notch decoration-wise. Even the parts in this level that stick out as being not as good as the other ones are still better than average. But the real highlights of this level are what put it so high on this list. Starting out with Sir Punch's part, we can see some pretty simple designs mixed in with some more complex ones. These fade-out effects are pretty cool too. And then the next part is some of the best decoration I've ever seen. It's got some psychedelic colors that pulse in and out to different colors, and it makes this weird effect that looks pretty cool. There are also these eyes in the background that are looking at you, that are kind of going crazy, and they are preparing you for the drop. Anyway, this is a pretty fun level. Master Duel is a remake of the classic two-player insane demon, Duelo Miestro. It's crazy the style of art that's used in this level. The first time I saw this, I thought it was going to be like the next Duelo Miestro, but it didn't really end up getting much attention when it came out, unfortunately. It didn't even get rated. I think this is the best level of all time that didn't get a star rating. Xylanox is one of those really underappreciated creators that makes some of the best levels, but a lot of his levels don't get rated for one reason or another. Art levels typically don't have very good gameplay, but this one's basically just the gameplay from Duelo Miestro, copied and altered slightly in some parts. And Xylanox is good at making gameplay anyway, so it turned out really well. So for most people, it's going to be a memory challenge, except on the off chance that you have friends who can beat insane demons with you. The level's also just fun to watch though, if you don't want to spend your time memorizing a lot of gameplay. This is one of the best two-player levels, one of the best art-based levels, and one of the best remakes. And it's overall just really good. Ragnarok is an extreme demon mega collab organized by Novel Boy and verified by Technical. The beginning parts are old, but they're still pretty good compared to other levels that were being made at the time. The parts after 50% are why I put it so high up on this list. I just really like the decoration and how the parts blend together. It wasn't the best level of all time like some people thought it would be, but it was a really nice extreme demon. WoW has some of the most creative gameplay to come out this year, and also some of the best glow decoration out of any level. First, the gameplay requires you to click really fast to the beat, and then you have to jitter click but straight fly at the same time with the wave and ship. It also has some generally hard gameplay before and after the spam part that looks pretty fun to play. The decoration uses a lot of glow, which some people would say is bad, but I think the glow looks really nice and wow, and in most levels decorated with a lot of glow. Maybe I'm just saying that because I use a lot of glow in my levels, but creators like Chase can use it way better than I can, and I really like how it looks. Freedom 08 is an Extreme Demon Mega Collab, hosted by Penudo and verified by Golden. It's got some really nice colors and glow usage, and the parts all look really good. This is the first level on this list where every part is great, and this one's way longer than most levels as well. The song is also a really big contributor to the level being good. Freedom Dive has been used in almost every rhythm game as a staple for a really good level in the game, except Geometry Dash until recently with this level. Obviously, there are other levels before Freedom 08 that use the song, but Freedom 08 perfectly embodies the song's theme. God Eater, the legendary demon made by the god of Geometry Dash, Novel Boy himself. The first ever divine demon, as said by C1997. So there's a lot of people who think this is the best level of all time, and a few people who think it's not that good. And I guess I'm somewhere in the middle. I definitely like it. The designs for this level are all really good, and there's no parts that aren't impressive. There are a few problems with God Eater, which are currently being fixed. 
The biggest being that Novel Boy actually stole some art from this level from the creators of the God Eater game, which is pretty common practice in Geometry Dash. I've actually gotten two levels rated, which both use Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon logo in the background. You can't really argue that it's adding much to the original art, but at the same time, you can't really argue that it's an original creation by the artist either, since prisms existed before the album and it's basically just a prism on a black background. And obviously, a band like Pink Floyd doesn't care if I use their 46-year-old logo in a Geometry Dash level, since there's other people that are actually selling illegal products with their name on it. But God Eater was one of the most high-profile levels in the game, so I can't really blame the God Eater company for filing charges, especially because Novel Boy monetizes his videos and makes money off of it. This was a pretty dumb decision by Novel Boy, but it's a mistake that a lot of people have made, and to his credit, he's making new art and decoration currently that so far looks even better. Anyway, do I really need to explain why God Eater is good? I mean, except for a small mistake when the level was released. The level is pretty perfectly made. Some people would say that it's bad, but I just think that's because the level was really hyped up and they were expecting better. Every part in this level looks well on its own and put together. And part of that is due to the art, but you can't really deny Nobble Boy's creating talent. Maybe we'll see a new version of God Eater on next year's list if I do one. The Mayhem War is a pretty neat boss fight level. It's got some really cool bosses and art in general, and really lively gameplay. Gameplay for boss fights are usually mainly memory based, which for me makes for some pretty bad gameplay most of the time. In my opinion, this level would work way better as an auto, but I've talked to some people who actually like memorizing gameplay, so I guess it should depend on what kind of gameplay you like if you'll have fun playing the Mayhem War. But this level got so high because of its decoration. This level has 500,000 objects, and it's not messy or cluttered in any way. Those objects went into decorating bosses and backgrounds and really complex block designs. The level was actually split up into two parts because of the lag issues. Some people might say that's a downside, but you can still play the full level. And I just think it looks really good. I've heard different people say that every level here in the top 5 is the best level of the year. And I wouldn't really blame them for saying any of them are. But there's only three levels made this year that I would personally give a perfect 10 out of 10. These three levels aren't only the best of the year, but I'd say the top three best levels ever made. I actually don't have any criticisms for any of these besides maybe certain parts in the level not being as good as some other ones. And two of these are mega collabs, so that's pretty much inevitable. I could realistically rank these in any order, but coming in at number three, we have Belloc. Belloc was another mega collab hosted by Penudo. The sync in this level is amazing, and not just with the gameplay. A lot of the designs in this level actually use the sync to decorate their part by doing pulses and changing colors. And this is common practice in Geometry Dash. But I would say this level has the second best sync in the game, behind only Freedom 08. I personally think that there's some parts that hold it back from first place. And again, these parts are really good just not as good as some other parts in Belloc or higher placements. Mainly the parts that hold it back decoration-wise are the part at 23% and then Penudo's part. But even with these parts, I still really like Belloc and think it deserves number 3 on this list. Ouroboros is my personal favorite extreme demon, and my favorite mega collab this year. The parts in this level are so lively and exciting to look at, which is something that you might get out of a level like Freedom Await. But Ouroboros has that extra edge of its original theme and the creators that made the level. There's not a single bad part in Ouroboros. There are some parts that aren't as good as some other parts, like the Devons and Loser Chicks, but I would still put them in A tier for decoration. So that's not to say that they're bad at all. The glow usage with this color combination is really good, and it really brings out parts like Chases and Darwins. Orange and purple are contrasting colors, so they look really well when they're put together. The gameplay in this level is really organized, and it looks fun to play. The level's partially inspired by Yadagarasu, and that level hasn't really aged very well, but one thing that's so good about it is its theme and the implementation of the Yadagarasu bird. And I do think that Ouroboros benefited from being inspired by it. It may have taken a long time to be completed, but Ouroboros was well worth the wait. It's now more than ever where a lot of people are able to make good levels. Some people start out and are able to make rate-worthy levels as soon as they start making them. 
and don't have a single non-rated level on their account. I'm certainly not one of these people, and neither is the creator of the number one spot, Zender Game. Zender Game has been building up his skill for making boss fight levels over the past two years, and has made some of the best boss fight levels with his boss series. And my top level of the year, and what I think is the best level of all time, is the S. Chanton, the final chapter of his boss series. All the problems I mentioned about the Mayhem War are not present at all in this level, and everything good I said about it works even better. There's not a single bad part in this level. One of the biggest problems I typically have with Zender Games levels and boss fight levels in general is the gameplay is hard to sight read, which I think makes it hard to have fun playing. But in this level, the gameplay is completely sight readable. With enough skill, you could beat this insane demon in less than 100 attempts. You can't really say that for any other boss fight level, or insane demon. All the decoration is perfect. The backgrounds, the block designs, and of course the art in the boss fight. It's really rare when a creator is able to make good decoration, gameplay, and art. And Zender Game proves in this level that he can do all of those things. It seems like a New Age series, where the Ischatan will go on to inspire similar levels like it. You should definitely go and try to beat this level, or just watch it being played. It's really a neat experience either way. Boss by potential is going to be raised even more when 2.2 comes out. And I guarantee, Zender Game is going to make another level that defines what can be done in that update. But for now, this is my personal favorite demon of 2019. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been a pretty fun video for me to make and kind of get my opinions out there about some levels this year because I think that there was a lot of really good ones. There's going to be a lot of new stuff on this channel in the next month or so. I've been working on character stills and some new editing stuff so the videos look better. And I'm also working on a new creating series so look forward to that. If you had any different opinions than I do, which I'm sure you do, then leave them in the comments and I'll see what the general opinion is on the video and some of the placements. So, I guess with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.